Are you keeping yourself busy during this time? I'm lucky I have a guitar, and I've been able to just kind of write down some thoughts and things that I've been thinking of, and uh, one of them was this song. I believe in love. I believe it won't be much longer. I believe in faith. I believe we're all getting stronger. You know, God is moving in this time. And then on the other side, and there, there will be another side, I think God is going to show himself that we are getting stronger. You know what? For now, what can we do? We pray, right? Things that we can pray, we can pray for strength in our body, we can pray for strength in our mind, we can pray for our family and for our friends. And as the Bible says, as we wait on the Lord, our strength will rise. So we are glad you're here with us this morning. I want everybody to rise up and remember like last week, if you wanna dance in your house, if you wanna raise your hands, sing, this is the time to do it. We're gonna praise our God this morning. And we're gonna start with this song right here.
Amen, amen. Listen to what Philippians 4 says. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Amen? amen. So that's what we do. We pray together, and we hope, and we pray. So let's do a song together. Here we go. It's just us calling upon his name, asking him to move in our hearts, move in our land. Every nation, every tribe, every tongue will proclaim his kingdom. We call upon your name. something a little bit different in our on, online gathering here today, okay? Uh, but it's going to need your participation. I need you to jump in and, and be a part of this. So here's how you can get ready. First of all, I want you to be ready to be able to respond in the chat over on the side to be able to type in some comments here in just a little bit. That's the first thing. Then the second thing is if you haven't already, you want to participate in communion together. Make sure you get a little piece of bread or a cracker or something like that, and then a cup of juice or wine or whatever you might have around the house. Doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be complicated, just something simple to remind us about what communion is all about. Now, we just sang a song about prayer, and rather than just sing about it, I thought, let's do it, let's share in it together. Even though we're online, even though we're not in the same room together, but let's have a, a shared prayer experience. Now, what I found is a lot of times people want to pray, they know that they should pray, but they don't know how to pray, or they don't know what to pray. And wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be great if you could have an outline, if there could be some kind of pattern that you could follow? 
Well, there is actually, I want to give you one today and I want to walk us through it a little bit together about, uh, about a, a pattern that I think Jesus modeled for us. And it's actually found in, in Matthew chapter six, when Jesus was praying what we have called the, the Lord's Prayer. And he gives us a little bit of a model. And I want to give you an acronym that, that uses the, the letters A-C-T-S. Now, some of you may know this, but others may not. And I want to walk you through what each of those letters stand for. And we're going to have a time of prayer together. I want you just to engage in this time with me. So, so here's how the, the first part goes. The, the letter A stands for adoration. And what that means is it's just like how Jesus began his prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And here's the, here's the clue. Here's the principle. Start your prayer with praise. Praise God for who he is worship him and you acknowledge his greatness. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to type in the comments one word or maybe a short phrase or something about what is it that you adore God for, about who he is. You might use the names of God, like Almighty God, that you are the wonderful counselor, you are the Prince of Peace, you are the way maker. Maybe it's some quality or characteristic about him that you especially love, that really connects with you. Some, something about his power or his wisdom or his strength or his grace or his mercy or his patience. And I want you just to type it in the chat. Just write that one. Let's just flood this right now with just adoration in, in our prayer time. That, that's what this is all about. Because when you praise like this, it keeps our eyes fixed on God. So starting with a heart full of worship, it, it reminds you who we're praying to. Okay? That's what adoration is all about. All right, now letter C stands for confession. So if you want to keep typing that in, go ahead and do that. But letter C stands for confession. Remember Jesus prayed, forgive us our debts, forgive us our sins, forgive us our trespasses, forgive us where we've messed up, God. And this is where we tell God that we're sorry for where we have fallen short, where, where we've missed the mark. And we're frankly, we're just asking God for forgiveness and for his help to do better next time. Now, I'm not going to have you post it. You don't have to type this in the chat. This is between you and God right now. But Nonetheless, don't skip this one. Don't fool yourself into thinking that, oh, there's not, I don't have anything to confess. Listen, you're human. I'm human. You sin. I sin. We make mistakes. We fall down every day. So just consider, think about what it is that you've done. What is it that you've left undone that just as, just as much as offends God and maybe upsets him? And listen. God is ready to forgive you, okay? And he wants to shower you with his grace. He wants to shower you with his mercy. But you have to first confess and ask forgiveness. Okay, now, letter T stands for thanksgiving. For thine is the kingdom, yours is the power and the glory. This is telling God, thank you for, for his work in your life. Praising, and, and if praise is acknowledging for who he is, thanksgiving is acknowledging for what he's done. Okay, if that, that's the way to look at that maybe. Give thanks for all the blessings in, in this life. Listen, we've all had seasons in this life where we sometimes struggle to see the good side of things. We struggle to see the blessing. And, and sometimes it seems like there's more darkness than there is light. It seems like there's more hurt than there is help or healing. Or it seems like there's more, there's more downs than there are ups. But being intentional about praying for Thanksgiving, it just makes us aware of the blessings in our life. So maybe you need to start small, but think about, and I want you to type this again. Type it in the chat. Type it over in the comments. If, if you're having trouble seeing something, just start looking at the small things. Look at, look at the, the sunrise this morning. I mean, look at the, a pretty flower that you see when you look out the window. Or look at the the food that's on your table or, or the people that are around you or the house that you're in or the, the shelter that you have, the clothes that you're wearing. And just look, if you start looking for the blessings, you'll be amazed at, at just how many of those blessings that you'll find. Okay. Now letter S stands for supplication. It's asking, give us this day our daily bread. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. So ask God for your specific requests for yourself, for, for other people. Now this is usually where we start. We usually just dive right into this. And we just start asking God for things. 
but I want you still to, to share your heart of what it is that's on your heart, what is it that's on your mind, the biggest things, the littlest things, the most things that you think maybe are even insignificant. And ask God for his help, ask him for his guidance, ask him for his healing. Pray about the needs that you have. Pray about the needs of other people that you know, and you come alongside them in prayer. And knowing that sometimes God doesn't answer the way we want or when we want or how we want, but you know that he will answer. So let me lead us in a time of prayer, and then let's have a time of communion together, okay? All right, let's pray. God, you are all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present, and we praise you for your great creation, that you are the way maker, that you're a good father to us, that you're bigger than our problems, you're bigger than our pains, you're, you, you can make a way where there seems to be no way. You are perfect in every way to us. And God, we come and we are sorry for the ways that we've let you down, for the ways that we don't live up to your expectations. And we just ask that you would humbly, that you would forgive us of our actions this week. God, forgive me for the way I've messed up, the way I've, I, I've, I've disappointed you, the way I've, I've hurt your heart. I'm sorry, I, and I wanna do better next time. And God, we thank you for your body and for your blood that was broken and spilled for us. And if you've got your communion elements right now, let's, let's just take them right now. Let's remember the, the bread, his body that was broken for us. Let's, let's remember it together, give him thanks together. And God, for your blood that was spilled for us, we give you thanks for that. Let's continue in prayer to say, God, thank you for the way that you lead in our lives, that you guide us, that you love us, that you shower us with your mercy and your grace. We thank you for so many blessings in our lives. And, and today, God, lastly, we ask you for your guidance and for your healing for, for us and for those that are around us. And, and we submit ourselves to your loving rule in our lives. And we ask that you would lead us and guide us, that we would follow where you lead. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
this week I heard an interesting analogy about somebody describing the state of affairs of our world right now. They said it's kind of like a Hollywood movie scene, like an old western town where you drive down the street and on the front everything looks great, everything looks calm, everything looks peaceful, but if you look behind the scenes it'd be a mess. And uh, they think that's kind of what's happening in our world, that things are okay, people seem calm, people seem adjusti adjusted, but if you dig below the surface a little bit, there's uh, a frustration and anxiety that is ready to bubble to the surface. And it really got me thinking about what's going on beneath the surface in us. And and what are those things that we have to make sure that we're paying attention to? It's like if you had a car that on the outside, it looks beautiful. You have the, uh, the newest Porsche and it's a bright cherry red color and it, it, looks, it looks great on the outside. But imagine that the engine isn't running right. It, it really, really doesn't hold the value that it appears to have. And it really doesn't work as well as, as what it might seem on the outside. So I got thinking about what do we do and what do we need to be paying attention to in our own lives to make sure that we don't just look good on the outside, but there's actually a healthy adjustment going on on the inside. So for the last several years, I've paid attention, paid attention to in my own life four key indicators. And uh, I call them my, uh, my RPMs. And so for the next four weeks, what I want to do is I want to walk through what I think are the essential ingredients, the, the, the essential, the, the vital signs is what I want to call this, the vital signs that we need to pay attention to in stressful times. Now, it's not just for stressful times. Here's a little secret. It's actually for all the time. These are, these are things that I look for all throughout the year in my life, but it's especially critical in stressful times, in anxiety-ridden times, in, in times of, of frustration and, and distress and difficulty and challenge. So if you don't get anything else that I say today, th this, this talk today, this training teaching today is really about the, the very first vital sign. And, and if you use the acronym again, another acronym of RPMs, R stands for relational. It, it's the relational part of our life. P stands for the physical part of our life. M stands for the mental part of our life. And then S is the spiritual. Relational, physical, mental, spiritual. And so today what I want you to grasp, I want to take a look at is, is this idea of the relational part of our lives. It's a critical, vital sign to make sure that we're, we're adjusting and we're doing well and that we're healthy and that we're we're living the life that I think God designed for us. So this first part is that the quality of your life will be determined by the relationships that you choose to develop. And I want to talk about key relationships that, that all of us, I think, need to have in our life in order to say, how am I doing in this area? Am I doing pretty well relationally? Here's four things. If you've got a, a pen and, and a piece of paper or you want to make some notes on your phone, let me give you some different kinds of relationships that I want to encourage you to have that I think the Bible encourages us to have as well. And here's the first one. We need to have models in our lives because models show us the way. Okay, Models that show me. They, they show us where to go. Now, of course, Jesus was the ultimate model for our lives. If you're a follower of Jesus, he, he's the ultimate model. In fact, in John 13, it says, I've given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Just watch me. I'm going to show you this is how, how to live. Now, Jesus is the ultimate model, but here's the deal. He's perfect, and you're not. I'm not. I'm not. But we all need even human models in our lives, people that we can look to to say, that's what I'm aspiring to. That's, what I, that's the inspiration for my life. Now, another person in the Bible, Paul, understood this as well. Now, he wasn't perfect either. But in Philippians 3.17, he says, pattern your lives after mine. 
So even he, this imperfect person was saying, listen, I, I hold myself up. I, I want to be a model to other people. And he's saying, you need to have somebody that shows you this is what you aspire to. This is the inspiration for the, the kind of life. It's, it's like if you ever do uh, woodworking or if you're into sewing and you've used some kind of pattern that you say, this is what I'm trying to create. And so I'm going to, I'm going to model what I'm doing here based off of this pattern. It's the same principle. It, it's human nature to learn by imitation. When we have models, we learn faster, we, we learn quicker. It's, it's easier and we make fewer mistakes because we say, okay, that's what it's supposed to look like. In, in 1 Thessalonians 1, 7, it says, you became imitators of us and of the Lord so that you became a model for all the believers. He's saying that this is the way it works. This is just kind of the dynamic of life. I, I modeled it for you and, and you imitated me and. In, in the Christian life and now you pass it on to other people and you become a model to other people. Think about, think about it as a baby when you're, as a baby's growing up. Everything that you learned as a baby, you learned by, by imitation. You learned by modeling it and, and mimicking back from, from somebody else. You watched your mother, you watched your father, you watched your brother or sister or, or somebody model something. They did it and then you did it. You, that's how you learned how to talk. That's learned how you learned how to read. It's how you learned how to write. It's how you learned how to feed yourself and care for yourself. There's only one problem with that. As a child, you didn't get to choose your models. You, you had no choice in the matter. You, you tended to imitate whoever was in close proximity to you. And, and whoever was the closest to you became your model. And that's okay when you're a kid. If you had good role models, if you had good models as a kid, then you probably grew up with healthy self-esteem and feeling good about yourself and, and you maybe grew up with some strong values that anchored you on the inside. But maybe you grew up with workaholic parents or maybe you grew up with anger being expressed in your home in inappropriate ways and, and so you've grown up, just you just kind of blow your stack. Or, or maybe you grew up with negativity around you and so you tend to be a negative person. And while some people grow up with successful models, other people, probably the majority, grew up with a lot of scars and you didn't have the perfect model and, and you picked up on those imperfections. And the good news is that you can change, you can choose your model. Now that you're grown up, you can choose your model. You can choose your, who you're gonna pattern after. And, and, you can reparent yourself. You can reprogram yourself through, through books or through, through Bible studies or through readings or through trainings or for personal contact with other good models and, and good mentors. And you say, well, well, wait a second, but I, I'm, I'm already 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or whatever. Listen, you still need models in your life. All through life, you're gonna need models, somebody to inspire you. And we all benefit from, from models. They, they show that it can be done. For years, there was a, a barrier in, in athletics. And maybe you've heard this story that nobody could ever run faster than a four minute mile. They said, humanly speaking, that the human body cannot run that fast. Nobody will ever do it until Roger Bannister ran a mile in under four minutes. And then all of a sudden, boom, that barrier was broken. And and it's, now it's no big deal today. Why? Because a model showed that it could be done. So if I were to ask you, who are your models? Uh, what would you say? Who, who are the people that you're, you're patterning your life after today? Who, who do, you, do you have those people in your life, in your relational world? You gotta find somebody that will model for you in, in maybe in different areas of your life, in, in your professional life, in your spiritual life, in your, in your family life, in your relational life. You've gotta figure out who do I respect enough that I wanna model my life after them. This is somebody that, that, that they, show me, they show me the way. See, everybody's ignorant. We're just all ignorant on different subjects. So you gotta find somebody that is knowledgeable and has gone the way that you wanna go in a particular area in your life. The Bible says that God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Why? Because the humble are teachable. They can learn from anybody. They can learn the good, the bad from anybody. They can learn those things from, from other people. If you can't learn from other people, you got to get your ego in check. So you got to have some models 
in your life? So who do you have to, to model in your parenting? Who's the model for your money management? Who's the model for you spiritually? Who's the model for you in, in your career? Know these people. Write them down. Have a list. These are the people. That's the first key. you got to have models in your life. Now, here's the second relationship, a relational marker that you need to have in your life. And this is that we need mentors in our life that help us to grow. That's what a mentor does. It helps us to grow to another level. It's like a personal coach. They, they are like a trusted counselor. They're a, a, a mentor is a, is a trainer, somebody that is training you up. And that's what a mentor does. They, they bring out the best in you. And they, they keep you growing. They keep you expanding. Think about in, in medicine, there, there are medical mentors. They, they have mentors for doctors become mentors for younger doctors. And musicians become mentors for younger musicians. In the military, they do this. And they have mentors for younger uh, soldiers and, and, uh, and, and people in the military. And, in, in insurance, insurance salesmen have, have uh, programs for mentoring younger insurance salesmen, management people, salespeople, all, all different kinds of organizations. Why? Because we learn best from models and mentors. In, in Proverbs 19, verse 20, it says this, get all the advice that you can and be wise the rest of your life. Think about Michael Jordan. Did Michael Jordan have a coach? Yeah, you bet he did. Even the best athletes have a coach. They have somebody that, that is pointing out, Here, here's how I want to bring out the best in you and bring, get the best out of you. That's why we need mentors, because we see life from a limited focus, from our perspective, from our background, and we need somebody else to say, have you thought about this? Have you, have you thought about that? Have you looked at it this way? You know, one of my mentors is, is in his 70s. And every month, still to this day, he, he takes somebody out to lunch and he says, I, I oftentimes don't even eat myself. I just have a list of questions and I want to learn from that person. I want to learn from their perspective. So don't think that you're too old and you don't need a mentor in your life. You can learn from other people. In Proverbs 15, 22, it says, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. And the Bible says it's the multitude of counselors, the multitude of coaches and people in our life that are there for our, our safety. They, our, our plans fail because we don't have that, those kinds of relationships in our life. So who's advising you? Who's coaching you as a parent or as a professional or in your marriage? Who's giving you insights into, into your spiritual growth to help you to grow personally? You need a model, you need probably several models and, and mentors in our, in our life. So what, what do you look for? Let me just give you a couple thoughts here. You want to look for somebody that has the same character and values that, that you have, that, that you, want to, you want to live out, that you admire, that you want to have in your life. And then somebody, secondly, that has the skills or experience that maybe you lack, that, that can speak into your life. And then thirdly, probably most importantly, it's somebody needs to be somebody that you trust. If you don't trust them, you're not going to learn anything from them. So you got to be able to trust them. So we need models in our lives. We need mentors in our lives. The third kind of relationship that we need in our life is partners. We need partners because here's what they do. They go with us. They, they come alongside and they will go with us. I'm talking about coworkers. I'm talking about teammates. I'm, I'm talking about helpers. I'm talking about building a network of people that are committed to that same life mission that you're on. It, this idea of what we're talking about here of growing ourselves spiritually isn't, gonna, it isn't an easy thing. And to try to do it on your own is a, is a foolish task. That's why most people don't do it, because they try to just do it on their own. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it, but, but a lot of people aren't committed to their, the pursuit of growth, and, and particularly of spiritual growth. But if you are, I just want to tell you, you're in the elite group. If you're committed to growing and finding out how can I get to the next level, you're in an elite group that separates you from, from most people. If you're really serious about doing this, you're, you're in an elite group. But I'm just telling you, 
you got to be careful about who you choose. When you're going to climb a mountain, you better be careful about who you who you climb that mountain with, who, who you're attached to, who, who you're anchored to, who you're hooked to. You better tie yourself to some partner who will support you in developing the habits and the skills and the relationships that you need in your life to really make your life count. I love this statement. You can't soar with the eagles if you're going to run with the turkeys. So, so be careful about who you surround yourself with in your life. You've got to have people that build you up, people that will support your life mission and not tear down your mission. You've got to have those kinds of partners. I shared this last week in Ecclesiastes. In Ecclesiastes 4, it says two are better off than one because together they work more efficiently. If one falls down, the other one is there to help him up. But if someone is alone, there's no one there to help him up. What he's saying is everybody needs partners. You got to have partners. Even Jesus had partners. He had assistants. He had 12, in fact, that were called the disciples. Paul, in the New Testament, he had eight people who were co-workers, and he had guys that he took with him everywhere that he went. Even the Lone Ranger had Tonto, <laughs> had a partner. Batman had Robin. Peanut butter had Jelly. All right, that's too far. But everybody needs assistance. You, you need partners that will go with you. Somebody who's headed in the same direction that you're headed. So you need models. You need mentors. You need partners, people that are going the same way. Now, the truth is that God has organized a group of people that are designed to be the partners that you need in your spiritual growth. And those partners are called the church. That's what the church is really designed to be. The partners going on that same mission together. And God wants you to be tied to a group of people like that, that are your family, that are your fellowship, that are your team, that, that are enlisted in this mission with you. They are in the platoon with you of God's army. And, and, and they're saying, I'm going to go with you. We're going to go in this thing together. And I'm telling you, if you're not connecting regularly outside of this social distancing, if you're not connected with people like that regularly in your life, the chances of you succeeding in your spiritual growth are very slim. Success is not a solo adventure. It's not a do it by yourself kind of thing. You can't do it alone. You will accomplish more if you team up with other like-minded people. So you get models, you get mentors, you get partners, and then here's the fourth one. You need friends. You need friends that will support you. One good friend is worth a thousand acquaintances, just superficial relationships. So how do you choose good friends? You look for people that can give you three things. First of all, they, they give you emotional support. In Proverbs 17, 17, it says a friend loves at all times and helps in times of trouble. That they're there for you. They, they undergird you. They support you no matter what, no matter what's going on. A friend walks in when everybody else walks out. That's what you need, emotional support. A good friend, secondly, gives you intellectual support. They, they make you think. They don't, they don't dumb you down. They stimulate your thinking. They, they, they get you to be creative. They, they bring out the best in you. And then the third thing is you need friends for spiritual support. They build up your spirit. They don't tear it down. They, they draw you closer to God. They don't bring you further away from God. In fact, that's what it says in Hebrews 10. Let's spur one another on toward love and toward good deeds. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what a, a good friend does. Somebody who will pray with you. Somebody that will pray for you. You say, man, I'd, I would love to have a friend like that. How, how do I get a friend like that? You know how you get a friend like that? You be a friend like that. We attract not what we want. We attract what we are. So if you want a friend like that in your life, you need to be a friend like that to somebody else. So you got to ask yourself in your life some tough questions about your friends. Are they helping me in my life mission or are they hindering it? Are they building up my values or are they tearing down my values? Do they draw me closer to God or they bring me further away from God? Any friend that draws you away from God, I'm telling you, is not a friend. They're, they're not doing you any service. Your life is too important to waste. Listen, today, I want to encourage you to take two very important steps. 
The first one is that you would commit yourself to deepening your relationship with God. Check that vital sign. How's that relationship with God doing? The second is that you commit to deepening the relationship with other people in His church, in His bride, His body. Now, that relationship with God is, is the first priority. It takes, has to take priority over anything and everyone else. That, that's your relationship with God. The Bible says in Romans 5, we rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what Jesus has done in dying for our sins, making us friends with God. Jesus, God says, I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. I want to be in your relational world. Jesus said, I don't call you my servants anymore. I call you my friends. Imagine that God calls us his friends. He wants to build that relationship with us. He wants to be your, your friend. He wants to be in your relational world. So first commit myself to the, my relationship with God. And once you've done that, then I want to challenge you to deepen your commitment to developing relationship with other people in your life. And, and specifically, I want you to focus in on developing relationships within, within the body of Christ. That, that's what we're here for, is to develop those relationships. So during this quarantine time, what are you doing to develop the relationships that you have on a horizontal level? Not just a vertical level with God, but on a horizontal level. I, I want to challenge you to become a mentor to other people, to be even to be a model to other people, to the people that you're an influencer in, in their life, that you would be an influencer in whatever area of influence God has called you. If you're an attorney, then, then show people what it means to be a Christian attorney. If you're a teacher, show people what it means to be a Christian teacher. If you're a musician, show people what it means to be a Christian musician. If you're a business leader, show people this is what it means to be a Christian business leader. Show people what it means to be a Christian mom or to be a Christian dad, to be a Christian citizen in this world. This is how we live in this world that we are. This is what it means to be a Christ follower in this world. Show that. Be a model. Be a mentor to other people. So the questions are, who is your mentor and who are you mentoring? Pay attention to the relational vital signs in your life. Let me pray for us as we close. God, thank you that your, your word for us is practical. It's not just theoretical, it's not just emotional, but it is actually practical in our lives. And I pray that you would help us to find relationships in our lives. First of all, our relationship with you, but then also our relationships with other people in, in our life that we would pay attention to those relationships that lift us up and, and maybe distance ourselves from those relationships that drag us down. God, show us those ones that are not healthy, that maybe need to be changed, they need to be, maybe even need to be broken off and help us to establish good relationships, healthy relationships with you and with those that are going in the same direction. This is what we pray together in Jesus' name, amen.